Hey everyone, this is Jack and welcome back to my channel. This is going to be a food recap video today featuring Dine LA for the spring edition. I've been participating in Dine LA for the last four or five years now and basically it's two weeks of eating featuring restaurants all over Los Angeles that participate in a prefix menu for either lunch or dinner or both. This spring I selected six restaurants in order to try out their lunch and dinner menus and we'll start out with Kodo. There's indoor bar and outdoor seating with heaters. Kodo is a modern Japanese American restaurant with bistro inspired dishes cooked over bean chotan, charcoal that rotates seasonally, and a sushi counter serving fresh fish caught locally from the markets in Japan. The fish was really delicious and so was the sake. Our server is from Japan and it was just super refreshing. We had multiple glasses as well as tried a bunch of cocktails because those looked really good as well. The meat was really tasty and the desserts were really light and flavorful but delicate and you guys need to try the mochi. It's so good. It's to die for. Bathrooms have sliding doors that are very minimalistic. It was a cool environment as the restaurant used to be a firefighter house back in the day. Continuing with the Japanese theme, next we have Kazunori. This is from the creator, Chef Kazunori Nozawa, who earned his first claim for his award-winning namesake restaurant, Sushi Nozawa, where he presided behind the sushi bar for over 25 years. It looks like simple traditional sushi with really great quality, and he goes to the fish market every single day at 4 in the morning to choose the best cuts of fish for each of his restaurants. He's expanded to six locations here in Los Angeles alone, as well as two locations in New York City for Kazunori. Kazunori is a hand roll bar. There are menus set with different types of ingredients. We did the Dine LA menu and decided to get a couple more things a la carte. But to my surprise, my actual favorite this time around was the oysters. The oyster sashimi, it had clean, silky textures in this ponzu-like sauce and fresh chopped chives on top. Really, really delicious and that was a special of the day. And lunch goes by extremely fast because there are two people who make the hand rolls for everybody at the bar and they're constantly working in front of you. It's a really cool experience if you get to visit Los Angeles. The third place that we had reserved was Soulmate in West Hollywood. It's a modern Spanish Mediterranean gathering place that cooks their food over a live fire. The space is actually very beautiful with great tapestries and paintings, but service was a little... I don't know what happened. The first half was great. All the food came out, you know, well paced and everything. I hate to give bad reviews, but unfortunately, I'm going to be brutally honest because I think that there's always room for improvement no matter what industry you're working in. We did have reservations when it was the beginning of a rush. And so maybe that's why service was better in the beginning, but who knows? Everlasting and yours is what? You look. You look. Oh um, my. This is see. This is a boy versus like true romance. Oh wow. Oh my goodness. Mine has caramel in it. I'm up now. Okay. You gotta try this one. Oh. That's like Christmassy, like chai. I can, I can wipe one. Okay, it's kind of hard to see, but they torch the tangerine mandarin thing. If you do end up visiting, do try the croquettes. They are plump with a crunchy exterior, but soft inside, nice and flavorful. And then of course they had uni toast because why not? Ooh, that's a hot plate. I'm scared. Cheers. Oh wow. Whoa. It's like creamy 
but you hardly taste the uni. No, it's there. It is, but like you get so much flavor from the salsa underneath it. This was a vegetable dish that looked more like fish, but it was really good. It was a whole Italian squash that had been roasted and fried. They were out of octopus for the day, so we got their garlic shrimp and we wanted to try their fried chicken, which was extremely juicy and probably the best savory thing and came with a delightful tangy sauce. All right. But then on the second half, they forgot our second round of cocktails and it took us forever to get the last couple of plates of food as well as dessert, which was really underwhelming. And yeah, although the place looks really good and the food was pretty decent, we won't be returning to this one, unfortunately. If it were me, I would have comped the second round of cocktails and made sure that the kitchen was preparing the next dishes instead of making it seem like the kitchen forgot our order. All right, moving on to a French style restaurant called Tess, which is the cuisine of Chef Raphael Francois and pastry chef Sally Camacho Mueller, served in a chic dining room on Sunset Boulevard in the heart of West Hollywood. These are actually new apartment residences at AKA. We were meeting CCS today to celebrate her new job. She'll be traveling around the world and we are here to send her off with a great meal. The dino lay here was only supposed to serve two people so we decided to do that as well as share a bunch of other a la carte dishes. We did one wine pairing and had a cocktail each. Isn't this view gorgeous? Before we got seated, because we were a little early, we decided to look at the wine cellar since we were waiting for our guests to arrive as well. well it seems like the more staple wines they have in the place are actually good Fancy. Okay. Look at all the wine in the world. Okay, the Grenache has like the most interesting labels. That's a really cute label. It's like a mask and the moon and insects. Okay, this is like the pretty wine section. The Sauvignon Blanc. Man, imagine if this was your freaking uh, wine cellar, bro. I think these are uh, reserves. Ooh, bathroom. I love checking out the bathrooms of restaurants because when it's well designed and goes with the rest of the space, it just makes it so much more of an experience because details are everything. Check out this elegant menu QR code that they update the website every single day. Wait, what was yours again? Love Potion. Oh, Love Potion. And then the Deja Brew and the Peach one. Sour Patch. This is probably the best salad I've ever had. It was just really clean, fresh, and the cheese was the star of the show. I had some sashimi, a nice crunchy bread with carpaccio on top, with a caper berry, a beautiful sausage, with some sprouts. No, like, get it. Okay, yeah, yay, okay, there, okay, bye. From appetizers to luge from our bone marrow, each course was better than the last, and CCS had never experienced a drink luge before, so this is a great first for her. It was a nice dessert wine. I've only done a whiskey luge previously at a Wagyu house. Fortified dessert wine. Fortified means it. What you gonna do or what she's gonna do?
fries were cooked in duck fat. They did forget one of the red wine tasting glasses, but we had it with our dessert. And we ended the entire meal with a luxurious sticky toffee pudding, as well as a berry tart with roasted marshmallows on top. This is the view of Los Angeles at nighttime, as well as the moon high in the sky. And yeah, we finished that off with Tupac <laughs> in a Banksy-inspired piece of art on a boxing glove wall. How very LA. Wait, I saw it earlier. <sighs> Rumble, but also Binksy. All right, the next place that we're going to actually has a precursor to it. We decided to go hiking, which is like the first time this year. I know it's crazy, but we have been traveling a little bit at the beginning of the year, as you've seen from my Japan playlist. But yeah, it's good to get out and not be in front of any technology and just surround yourself with green nature, especially since we had a lot of rain at the beginning of this year. California is officially outside of a drought now, so that's great. We ended up going to Spoon and Pork in the Sawtell area. This is a Filipino comfort food place that had an all-you-can-eat dine in LA. Literally, you could get anything on the menu as many times as you'd like, but you couldn't take home anything, of course. And this included a drink, non-alcoholic, and I went with the coconut water. My partner got a mango juice, very typical Filipino fair and yeah everything was super delicious we even got additional chickens because the pork belly was quite fatty although rich and very flavorful we just wanted something that could tide us over for the rest of the day and we asked for two more pieces of chicken but got four instead which was a delight and really tough to finish but we did it it was also great because the server was not having a really great morning, but by the end of it, she was like, wow, you guys did a great job when we cleaned our bones. And, you know, that kind of made her smile, which I really liked. 10 out of 10 would come back again. The sixth and final Dine LA restaurant is Manuela. It is located in the Arts District with a farmer and artist combination. Be careful though, because the GPS drops you off at their shipping and docking station. You have to go all the way around the corner and we didn't know that it was inside Hauser and Worth, which is a Swiss contemporary modern art gallery company. So look out for that sign instead as Manuela has small signage at the front of the establishment. Upon checking in, we were a couple minutes late due to trying to find the front of the restaurant. But even after that, the hostess told us to wait for another seven to 10 minutes, which we did. I took a couple photos here and then they seated us on the outside of their patio area, which was very lovely. Yes, there was even a pet pig under the table across from us. Since Alien and I were both doing Dine LA, I asked the server if we could change one of the desserts to another option on the menu and just pay it a couple dollars extra to make it the same amount. It was strange because she said that there are no substitutions and then she made the excuse that she didn't know how to convert that in the system. I feel like she should have just stuck with the no substitutions policy and also it just looks like she doesn't know how to do her job very well. Good customer service would have also had her ask if this was even a possibility and have somebody else input something that she didn't know how to do or at least teach her how to do it. The food was good, very refreshing, and had very easy flavors to kind of settle into. Usually Ailey and I run down the cocktail list and try every single one if it places good, but we didn't even order a second round here. Honestly, I didn't care for the dessert, but you know, that's what they offered at the time. I really enjoyed the fun pom-pom balls that were near the lighting fixtures, hanging from the bar and by the kitchen. And after that, we decided to take a walk around the arts district 
Anyway, that's all I have for Dine LA this spring. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it so that other people can learn about our restaurant week here in LA. My next video is going to be exploring the rest of the arts district and going to Daiso. So make sure you're subscribed with notifications on so that you know when to catch that next video. Keep curious, everyone. Jack out. Thank you.